morning, my loves. Eleanor Schnarr here with this week's Deborah's Tree message. And today, this week, I've been thinking a lot about one of my favorite Norse myths, uh, which is the story of the Lay of Thrym. And I've noticed that recently a lot of people have been like in these big arguments about about drag and gender representation and that seems to be a really hot button issue so i thought i'd talk about it and this story of the lay of thrym is uh very interesting and unique because the whole story centers around drag and so basically how how the story goes and this is a a loose retelling i i highly recommend you look it up in its original form uh in the poetic edda and basically the story goes that a frost giant steals thor's hammer steals mjolnir and he comes to asgard asking for ransom to if thor wants his hammer back he he needs to give him something and he says well what do you want he says i want to marry freya fertility goddess and Freya is like oh hell no uh, and the the frost giant is like well I guess I'm just gonna keep it and and Thor is like oh we have to think about think of something to think of some way to get it back and so Loki comes up with an idea and he says what if we pretend that Freya actually says yes and we dress you up like Freya and present you as the bride for this for the scary frost giant. And so they're like, yeah, this is a great idea. And so they dress Thor up in a beautiful wedding dress and Loki dresses up as one of one of Thor's handmaidens. Um, Loki who is who is famously gender fluid um, has has a number of myths where where he either shows up as as female um, or is somehow, you know, um, represented, represented as, as queer in some way. But so what happens is uh, they they go and Thor is doing his best to, to be to be Freya, to be convincing. But there's a huge wedding feast and he ends up eating and eating and eating and eating. And the Frost Giant is like, oh, what an amazing appetite you have. And, and Loki's like, yes, well, he's very excited to see you. And so the, the wedding feast ra- wraps up and finally at the end, they're, they're like, oh, we have, to, we have to find something sacred to make this wedding vow on to make it official. And um, so they bring out Mjolnir and Thor obviously grabs it and ends up murdering everyone at the wedding feast. <laughs> um, this is a myth this is so this is this is a this is uh this is a funny story it's a humorous story um as most drag is uh but it's also it's also a a sacred story that that talks about i think i think it talks it's talking a lot about our priorities um and how the external way that we present ourselves needs to be fluid enough um that we can get back what really gives us power because here here we have here we have somebody at, at the beginning whose whose power has been taken away you know his his hammer this 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 truth descending like a lightning bolt this thing that gave your spirituality its reason for existence is uh is your hammer your your way of being useful your way of being creative your way of building things uh has been has been taken away and well what do you what do you what do you want for that how do you how do you get it and well initially it's you want your high your highest love is is now going to be married to whatever stole your power mm, your your freya your goddess energy 
is going to be taken by by whatever stole your power and you're going to be forced into this false marriage into this this kind of shallow union and that's a place of disempowerment and that's a place of disconnection and what do we do you know what what do we what do we actually how do we actually need to engage the world and go forward in a way that lets our spirituality remain potent maintain its virility so to speak well we need to give up the kind of external appearances we need to we need we need to to give up give up the idea that we have to look like a certain thing and when and that's and 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 that's i think this this kind of spiritual drag um is the capacity to have this this internal angelic empowered um spirit spiritual potency behind us no matter what we dress as no matter what our our externals look like and i think a lot of a lot of kind of the the fear that people have over you know how we how we perform gender or how we perform any kind of external role that we need to fill for the sake of society um you know if we make that the priority if we make that the thing that we're arguing about if we make that kind of the litmus test for spiritual validity is you know do you, do you act a certain way do you perform a certain way do you do you look a certain way do you do you re, do you have relationships in in the way that that we expect relationships to work um we're giving up the true spiritual potency because we're not willing to be flexible we're not willing to overlook the externals um and uh, the frost giants are going to steal our hammer so uh put on your lipstick <laughs> amen 